you have enough faith to operate toward Yah's goal and plan for you all by yourself? Or do you need some help? Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10-Minute Torah, day number two of Torah portion of the era. There is a statement that is made in Bereshit chapter number 18, Genesis 18. As we're studying this, that we've read many, many times, and we've rejoiced with Sarah in regards to it, but there's there's something a little, little curious going on here. It says in chapter 18, a bare sheet or Genesis, verse number 10, and he, that is Yahweh, said, I shall certainly return to you according to the time of life, and see Sarah, your wife, is to have a son. And Sarah was listening in the tent door, which was behind him. And continuing now, it says, Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah was past the way of women. What does that mean? She is post-menopausal. She is now beyond the years of fertility. And Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I've grown old, shall I have pleasure, my master being old too? Yahweh said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Surely, or shall I truly have a child since I'm old? Is any matter too hard for Yahweh? At the appointed time, I'm going to return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah is to have a son. Why is that strange? We've read that many times, and we've appreciated and celebrated the fact that Yah has come and told Abraham and Sarah that this time next year they're going to have a son. What's interesting here is Abraham already knew this. Matter of fact, if you go back a page or so in your text to chapter number 17, and the discussion pertaining to offspring to Abraham and to his descendants, uh, that they are to be circumcised, and every male on the eighth day as a descendant of Abraham is to be circumcised. Yah says that he is going to bring forth a son to Abraham and Sarah. He says in verse chapter 17, verse 16, concerning Sarah, and I shall bless her and also give you a son by her. Abraham falls on his face and he says, you're going to give a boy, a child to a man that's 100 years old? And Sarah, she's 90. She's old in his estimation. Abraham says, I... Let's keep it simple, Yah. Let Ishmael live before you. And Elohim said, No, Sarah, your wife, is truly bearing a son to you, and you shall call his name Yitzhak. Now, where it gets interesting is that Yah says to him um, in verse 21, But my covenant I established with Yitzhak, whom Sarah is to bear to you, at this appointed time next year. Again, that's chapter 17 and verse 21. Abraham already knew from the promise of Yah that his wife was going to bear to him a son this time next year. Not only did he know he was going to have a child and that it would be a male child, but he knew when it was coming. So the question in my mind is, why did Yah find it necessary to reappear a second time to this couple in order to inform Sarah of this news? Would not have Abraham gladly went to his wife and said, I just had a word from the father. Yahweh has said to me, we're going to have a child this time next year. Why would Abraham not tell her that? 
That's an answer I don't have. I don't know. Maybe it's somewhere in the same category as to why he would tell other men who ruled other countries that she was not his wife, but his sister. These are questions I'd like to have a, a discussion about with Abraham in the kingdom, maybe sitting under his fig tree. I look forward to that. I'd love to hear the answers. Matter of fact, if you've got an answer as to why he wouldn't tell her, please uh, message me on on the uh, on this channel here at YouTube and let me know. And for those that are friends with me on Facebook, send me a message. I'd like to know what your answer is. What does this say to us? Yah wanted Sarah to have the same level of faith that her husband Abraham had. It was important to Yah that she personally be as elevated as her husband and that she too have a personal word. It was going to take an extreme level of faith and belief and obedience attached to that for this to work. Perhaps after the, uh, the time of menopause had taken place and there was the um, obvious fruitlessness that they just abandoned the intimacy of their, of their marriage. In order for this to work, then there's got to be a resumption of the intimacy. If you read Romans chapter number four, you will find that it says that Abraham, against all hope, nevertheless believed. The rabbinical mind says that they began to call each other Abraham and Sarah announcing that they were more than just dignitaries, but they, they were the father of a multitude and that she was uh, a high and exalted lady and that the promise was that she would be a mother of nations. And in doing so, that their faith rejuvenated them physically. Matter of fact, after this episode of Vimelech, King of the Philistines sees Sarah, 90 plus year old Sarah, and she's so beautiful yet that he desires to take her into his palace and have her as one of his wives. She's not looking like any 90 year old woman that you and I know. Her faith has changed her. In the book of Mark, chapter number six, some of the saddest words in the Brit Hadashah, Yeshua comes into his own country. And it says in verse four, five, and six, and Yeshua said to them, a prophet is not unappreciated except in his own country and among his own relatives and in his own house. And he was unable to do any miracle there except that he laid his hands on a few sick ones and healed them, and he marveled because of their unbelief. Where our faith is not elevated, where it's not active, where it's not being evidenced by a walk of obedience, we are actually hindering the intended and desired work of Messiah in our midst. Now, one may argue and say, but he's sovereign. He can do anything that he wants to. He can set us aside and just sweep in and do what his work would require and, and just run over the top of us if we're standing in his way. Yah does what he does through the agency of man. Yeshua, our Messiah, came and lived as a man among us to do the works that he did. And greater work shall we now do because he has returned to the Father. He is invested that investment in us. But there still is required belief, faith. And Yah is willing to visit you and I individually and corporately to make sure that our faith and our belief 
is high enough to get the job done. We'll talk more tomorrow and until then, shalom.